Hi, thank you for joining us today. I'm Corey Keysweater, Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Forcepoint, and I'm joined today by Justin Crowley, our Principal Sales Enablement Manager, and we're going to be walking through a short demo of our Forcepoint Web Security Gateway, or SWIG, capability within the Forcepoint One platform. Now, before we jump into the demo, I just want to give a quick overview. Forcepoint One is a cloud-native security platform uh, that fits the needs of, of SASE by combining web security along with cloud security or uh, cloud app security and private application security. Today, we're going to be focused primarily on the web security uh, capabilities of Forcepoint One and um, the underlying zero trust foundation of the Forcepoint One platform, enabling us to use identity-based access controls and other contexts to determine what is safe and what should be um, blocked or mitigated. So right here, we're looking at a simple diagram showing the use cases that the Forcepoint One platform covers. So on the right-hand side, the, the resource that we're covering is use of the internet. And on the left, you can see the endpoint agent uh, for distributed enforcement is how we're enforcing SWIG policies or secure web gateway policies locally to ensure the fastest experience for our end users. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it off to Justin to walk us through a quick demo of the capabilities. Awesome. Thanks, Corey. Yes. Yeah, so as uh, Corey mentioned, and if you've watched any of previous videos, right, the, the theme here is around zero trust, right? And so the Force Point One platform is built around that, that foundation of zero trust, right? And we've, in our previous videos and in today's video, we're focusing on the gateways, right? So in this case, we're focusing on the web gateway, so the secure gateway. In previous videos, we've covered the cloud, so cloud access security broker, and in other ones, we've covered private apps through our, our ZTNA. And what we're trying to do here is, again, simplify security, right? Everything's become com complex. So what can we do from a force point standpoint to, again, simplify or to create that, that single platform that includes multiple capabilities, right? That includes my secure gateway, maybe RBI, right? SSPM, CSPM, DLP, right? There's tons of vendors out there, but we need to consolidate this, right? We need a single platform, Force Point One, that can provide all of those capabilities. So within the Force Point platform, right, we're combining the zero trust and the SASE security technologies. We have our secure gateway, our Casbian, or ZT name. Today, we're going to focus in on the secure gateway. So how can I have a solution that can monitor and control any interaction with any website, right? CASB is focused in on your cloud right, your SaaS applications, but what about the rest of the web, right? What if I want to control sites based on the category? What if I want to control sites based on the reputation? That's one big thing there, Corey, is some um, proxies, right, back in the day, if you think of an on-premise proxy, it really just looked at categories, right? Is this site social networking? Is this site a sports website? But that's not enough anymore, right? We have to look at the reputation. How well known is this website? right? Has it been around for a while? Has it been compromised in the last six to 12 months? Is it being hosted from some server farms that are a little risky, right? So as you can see on the screen here, not, not only can I look at the category, I can then say based on the reputation of the website, right? If there's any risk associated with it, moderate risk, or maybe it's trustworthy, suspicious, right? I can say if it's equal to a high risk website, let's just go ahead and block it, right? I don't want anything to do with that website. But we take it a bit step further there, right? So again, not only just looking at the category and the reputation, remember I mentioned one of the services that we can have uh, on part of this is RBI, remote browser and isolation. I wanna stop yeah. here to take a minute because I think yeah. this is fundamentally important. Now, the, the other things that we were talking about, it's kind of like our, you know, your grandfather's web security that's been around since yeah. the 90s. You've got categories and you can block or deny and that or block or allow. And that kind of um, either or it's one or the other, yeah. it's binary. 
Yeah. That way of doing web security is not sufficient for modern businesses and what organizations need to be productive. There's a lot of things that we know we want to block. And there's other things that we trust. And we, if we can verify it's trustworthy, we just want to allow direct access. But it's that gray area in the middle yeah, that we need a better yeah. solution for. And I think that's where zero trust is really innovating. Currently, right now, what zero trust innovation is, is focused on is dealing with things outside of the network that you manage, dealing with basically public resources. How can I enforce a, a heightened security posture for my users accessing resources I don't control on networks I don't control? That's where RBI comes in. And that's what really makes this uh, an interesting set of capabilities. Well, and that's exactly it too. And when you think of productivity, so you know, I used to work in support in my previous life, um, working with proxies. And a lot of the time when you're in support, you're getting help desk tickets because, hey, you know, this site shouldn't be blocked. And a lot of it comes down to this uncategorized. In the, in the past, your proxies, right? So if any customers watching this, most are blocking uncategorized because it's, we don't know, right? Uncategorized basically just means we found a website. We haven't had time to scan it. We've never seen it before. We don't know much about it. There's not many links, keywords, whatever your, your AI is doing to, to scan the site. So we're not really sure. So we're gonna, un we're gonna put it as uncategorized for now. Most proxies block that category because there's a risk associated with it. Now, uncategorized could mean the site's clean. We just don't know yet. Could mean the site's bad. We just don't know yet. So as you said, there's that gray area, that in between. So they would just block it. But that could now create a lot of help desk tickets. Somebody calls in, Corey, I'm trying to access site XYZ, and it's blocked, okay? So the admin has to review it, go in, oh, yep, it's an allow, or you should be get, able to get to it, and I'm going to put it in a, um, a bypass category. But say that site does become malicious. Well, it's already in your bypass category, so now somebody can get to it. That's where the isolation comes into play to say, hey, if it's uncategorized, or I could even put suspicious, you know, insert whatever category that I want here to say, hey, if I feel that there's any possible risk associated with these websites, I'm gonna go ahead and isolate those, right? So we can remove that threat vector, right? So instead of loading this website on that local workstation, we can now run that basically, um, it's like running a browser in the cloud, right? In a VM essentially. So now the user can get a visual representation. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second here. But again, this is huge as well. I think of this as, you know, as you said, not your grandfather's proxy. Right, this is you know proxy 4.0, but again, this is one single platform, right? Some competition or some everybody others in this space may have to integrate with third parties to get the RBI capabilities, or they may not have any integration. So a customer has to go out and purchase a secure gateway vendor. They then have to go out and purchase an RBI vendor. Now you got two separate clouds. You got two separate management consoles, right? We have this all in one single console in, in one single policy that we can now have RBI built in. And you were talking about help desk support tickets. I mean, RBI, I've, I know of uh, some other solutions out there that a uh, customer came to ours because the, the other RBI was basically a browser and a browser and their user population thought that something was wrong every time they went through that. They, they, and they ended up being, no, that's just the technology. And that, again, part of a well thought out solution and being a unified whole, our customers actually, that, that particular customer, their support cases like dropped off yeah. uh, drastically once they migrated to Forcepoint RBI. Uh, there was a lot of value from having a seamless integration between the regular web security. So you can have the fastest, you know, direct performance. You're going direct to that site where necessary and then going through isolation only on potentially risky or known risky. For example, we have um, people doing criminal investigative work that will use the RBI solution to go into sites managed by um, malicious actors. Uh, mm -hmm. We also see this with loan officers that at financial institutions that have to uh, look into, do a little bit of research on an organization, oftentimes those websites were just created, have no reputation and yeah. are uncategorized. In order for the business to continue to work, they can't block those sites. They have to be able to go and visit them even if they are malicious and, be, and do so safely. And that's what RBI really provides. 
Yeah, so let's actually show uh, what all of this looks like uh, from an end user standpoint, right? So you can see my policy. I basically say, hey, if you're going to certain categories, right, I'm going to isolate that traffic, right? I then have my different rules to say if you're going to certain categories that I want to block, right? We can all pretty much name the categories that we would like to block. I can easily set up my deny. But we can also take it a step further to say, hey, what if I want to allow certain sites, but I'm nervous about data loss prevention or data loss, right? So how can I now still allow somebody to go to maybe their personal email? Their, you know, fate, even social networking is now can be a threat vector. What's stopping me from going into Facebook, messaging Corey and uploading sensitive data into Facebook, right? And as, as Corey mentioned earlier, I don't trust the web. Right? There's so much out there. How do I as an admin trust? Right? And so that's where a solution like Force Point One to say, hey, you know what? You really don't have to trust the website because you now have our tool in place to say, hey, if somebody's going to their personal Yahoo mail, right? And I'll show you an example, we can apply that DLP. Right. So here's a prime example, right? I have my Force Point agent running. And the nice thing about our Force Point agent, it has ZTNA built into it. It has secure gateway and it has CASB all built into a single agent, right? So there's three functionalities that we talked about, those gateways, the CASB, Secure Gateway, and ZTNA, all built into a single agent. So in my case, I'm going to open up a new tab and let's go do some email here, right? I mentioned, you know, maybe Corey and I are leaving the organization. We're starting a new cybersecurity company. So I'm going to go ahead and upload some confidential force point data into an email, right? So we're going to go here and I got some confidential data that I'm going to try attaching to an email and our DLP can come up and block that, right? So we can now alert that very quickly to say, hey, wait a second. Yeah, you're trying to upload confidential data, right? We can look at just keywords. We can look at regexes. We can do file fingerprinting, exact data matching. We can do, um, uh, as I mentioned, look at the regexes, keywords. There's so much that we can look at. It's not just your basic DLP. We can fingerprint files, right? Maybe there's a client intake form. Hey, block if you see a form being uploaded. Or we can do exact data matching. Hey, do you see any data that contains certain personal information? Let's go ahead and block that. But again, I'm on a personal application, right? On a corporate device, but I can now apply my DLP policy, right? I can even say, hey, you know what? Corey, I'm tired of presenting. I'm going to go and uh, do some gambling on uh, my corporate device here, right? I don't want to present anymore. Well, again, there's our category being blocked, right? Hey, we have to go into certain websites. And I, because I was just thinking, depending on your use case, depending on what the organization is, if you make gambling software, gaming software, and you want yep. to allow this category, but you know that this category of site is typically um, a target for hackers, then you can just isolate it. So exactly. now, you, you can, you have all the answers at your disposal and in a very simple to use system. There's one pane of glass for all of your policies within Force Point One, whether it's isolation policies for RBI, web security policies, application policies, whether they're private apps or cloud apps, it's all together in one place. And actually another thing for us to, to cover in this demo, shadow IT, being able to identify when somebody's using, uh, when a user is going to, let's say, an unmanaged instance of an application, we can still enforce DLP controls over that. Exactly. And we'll, we'll show that logging there and how we can give visibility into that. But one great thing that you mentioned is that that tenant control, let's allow access to Microsoft 365, but not allow access to personal um, instances. Or in one of our previous videos, we talked about um, contractors. Maybe a contractor is on a corporate device and they're trying to log into maybe they're, you know, whatever company that they work for. They're trying to log into that instance of Microsoft 365 on a, let's say, a Forcepoint device. We can say, hey, wait a second, you're on a Forcepoint device. You can only log into Microsoft 365 or the Forcepoint Microsoft 365. You can't log into um, your corporate instance, right? So we're able to do that tenant control built in as well. But we mentioned the isolation, so I want to go to, you know, CNN.com, right? We can pop up and, um, and isolate that. The reason I chose CNN, it's a heavy website, lots of ads, a lot of content uh, loading, and it's saying, hey, you want to access this website? We're going to allow you there, but we're going to go ahead and isolate that page. So you can see my URL up top there, right? So I'm going through a virtual machine uh, in my own environment here, but you see the page is loading. 
right? If I right click, you'll notice that I don't have any copy and paste, right? My interaction with the page is a little bit different. Whereas if I open up the page and went to, um, we'll say, you know, I'm a sports guy, so let's go to TSN, right? A sports website, right? Page loads, and you'll be able to see that I can right click and do different things with, uh, with this web page, right? I right click, so you can tell that my interaction with this page is different here, right? So I got some ads popping up, right? But my interaction can be as if I'm going directly to a website, right? So my policy here, hey, sports website, there's no need to isolate that. But a news website, that city is trying to now sell me a, uh, a cashback card, right? So you can see my interaction with the site is as if I was just going to this website directly. And the nice thing about our agent is it's actually doing that decision on the endpoint itself. So it's determining, okay, what sites am I gonna allow Justin to go to? What website should I block? Should I send it out to the cloud to isolate it? Or should I allow this website to go directly out to the internet? Right, so this website for TSN, my policy is allowing this. So there's no need to send this through the cloud proxy. We can actually send this directly out to the internet. Right, so I'm now able to increase performance and reduce latency because I'm not having to process that in the cloud. Right, so if I actually go to my logs here and jump into my secure gateway, Right, you'll be able to see in my policy, it tells me what was actually controlled in the cloud. Right, so there's my deny for, for poker.com. Right, I wasn't able to get to that website. So let's remove my filter. Right, so I can still give visibility into every transaction that my uh, endpoint is generating, even if it's not actually going out through um, the cloud, if it's just going directly out to the internet. So once my logs load here, you'll be able to see the action column. Right, you'll be able to see that we're now able to. I'm apply some policy in the cloud, or was it just allowed? So as you can see in my logs here, right, anything that was allowed, right, has the allowed column. We were able to see what was denied, right? So I have, uh, you know, several log uh, log entries here, but you can see everything that was allowed. So even though that this wasn't processed in the cloud, there you can see my process via the cloud, right? So even though this was allowed, did not go through the force point one cloud, I'm still able to give visibility in every transaction, right? So we don't have to leverage the cloud for the decision making. The endpoint can make that decision for us, determine should this user get out to that website and allow it out to the internet, right? So this is another way where we can increase productivity, increase performance while reducing latency, but still providing that security. So as you see here, the, uh, an action that was processed via the cloud, this is me going to my Yahoo Mail where I triggered some DLP. And you can see it was processed to the cloud. I can see what was done. So I can see web-based email. There's that trust score that I talked about. But we can see that this was triggered through my DLP. It's told that, hey, we need to process this via the cloud. We need to apply further DLP. So again, as you can see on my workstation, right, it doesn't matter if I'm going to a Yahoo Mail site to apply DLP. Doesn't matter if I'm going to a gambling website, right? We can go ahead and block that. And then there's the isolation on top of that, right? And this is all built into our secure gateway platform, which is part of the, the force point, uh, force point one zero trust framework. And actually uh, one thing that I think is really, really cool with this, uh, the secure web gateway capabilities within force point one, there's a kind of a, a feature for power users that will allow you to basically control any method, any HTTP or HTTPS method. So whether it's a post or a like even on a social media page, anything like that. If your organization has a desire or a need to enforce controls around that, you have the capability of doing that with Force Point One's uh, Secure Web Gateway. Exactly, and that's actually what we call uh, FPSL, or Field Programmable Sassy Logic. And what it does is it actually looks at the HTTP request headers. So remember when I did that email before and I added an attachment, right? Traditional DLPs are looking for data. What if there's text? So say, for example, I'm gonna send this to Corey and Corey at site.com, right? And I see, you know, check this out. And in this case, I'm just gonna put the word confidential, right? I'm looking for anything that contains confidential, and I guess I should spell confidential right, and I try to send that email, right? We can look at the body of the email as well. So look at text, not just the data, not just an actual payload. We can look at the text and say, hey, wait a second, the email that you're sending contains sensitive data in the body of the email as well, 
And that's using that FPSL or field programmable SASE logic. We can use that same technology as Corey mentioned to look at things like, you know, a like on LinkedIn. Is somebody, or uh, on Facebook, is somebody posting a message on LinkedIn, right? So we can look at a wide range of content, give you full access, right? Give you the granularity to be able to apply certain policy. And as we mentioned, it's that little gray area to say, well, I don't really want to block LinkedIn. People use it for business purposes, but I want to make sure that Justin isn't using LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, appropriately or not. Look at things like Wikipedia. What's stopping somebody from going to Wikipedia and typing in data, right? And that's where we can leverage um, our FPSL along those lines uh, as well there, right? So there's my webmail block, right? You can see that I'm looking at some confidential data here, right? I'm looking for webmail compose and if it contains the word confidential, right? So we can look at some code using Lua code to actually get granular. Now, this is getting a little, little technical here. But again, we can look at the URLs, look at the request headers for certain content. Are we seeing anything that contains messages? Save and send. Hey, it looks like this could be an email. Hey, if it's an email and the website is a web-based mail, so in our case, Yahoo Mail, I'm going to apply certain DLP to that. So again, the, the power of our DLP engine is, is just that. It's quite powerful and to give you that granularity. Now, one thing Corey mentioned, one last thing here that I wanted to, to cover is the shadow IT, right? I want to know what my users are doing from a web security standpoint. Do I need to be more strict when it comes to, uh, to policy enforcement, right? So we can take all of those logs from your secure gateway devices and make sense of the data, give you visibility into what's being seen. So in my case here, right, I have the ability to look at the reputation of websites, right? Are they accessing sites that are trustworthy? Right. What are the top sites that are risky that they're accessing, right? What am I seeing from a destination count? What am I seeing from uploading, right? You can see my user here. Hey, he's uploading quite a bit of data to risky websites, right? Who are the top downloaders, right? So we give you all that visibility to then allow you to determine, as you can see in my policy, I just have my one user here, right? But again, think of this on a grand scale. We have thousands of thousands of user, right? All the data that we can give you visibility into. Hey, why am I seeing so much traffic to social networking? Maybe I should go ahead and block that or investigate why I see so many users going to, you know, uncategorized or going to, you know, sites that really aren't up anymore, right? So we can give you all that visibility, not only just the policy, but give you the visibility as well. And that's really where the synergy of having a unified platform for a secure web gateway and a CASB together in one uh, really comes through or to put it in uh, without using that terminology, the same tool to manage the use of sanctioned SaaS apps as well as unsanctioned apps and general use of the web will give you as an organization the visibility into what are all my people doing? What yeah. unsanctioned apps are they using? Should we adjust? Should we maybe start, maybe everyone's using Slack, but they're on an unsanctioned instance. Well, let's get a corporate sanctioned Slack and put some controls around those and stop using the, the tool we were mandating that nobody likes and nobody's using anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are all intelligent, uh, meaningful conversations to have that the visibility here can enable you to see, but then give you also the option to control and bring any shadow IT asset under management as a uh, sanctioned asset with the, the full CASB capabilities of our solution. Exactly. Yeah, so that's everything that I had uh, for today. So um, Corey, I'll pass it to you for our uh, call to action or, or plan to action. Well, thank you, uh, Justin, for walking us through this. And for everybody watching, um, please reach out to us, request a uh, tailored demo. We'll set one up one-on-one -on -one with you to go through your specific use cases and show you how we can best address those use cases that you have. So uh, thank you all and please uh, follow us for, for more videos and I'll be happy to speak with you soon.